Have any of you guys ever heard of the HD7730? Me neither, until I used it in a potato. I sent a message last week. Jackson Hewitt, ah. sitting on scent. Looks like I've been discontent. Still shoot my shot, talking Gabe Vincent. I, I put this GPU together with an Athlon and it performed pretty bad. But what can it exactly do by itself? with a better system. Don odpowie swojemu przeciwnikowi. No mówię, 45 kg. Za większy różnica, ale Oj 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 Now, when I was going through the Athlon build, I noticed that in some tests the GP wasn't even hitting 100%, which kind of shocked me a bit. So, I wanted to take a fat look at this from a different perspective. So, we're going to throw it in Project Nyakaj. PC I just built with an i9-11900H, which is about similar to like a 5600X. So I wanted to see what this thing can do in 2023. So just how unusual is this thing? Essentially, to keep it simple, this is a cut down HD 7770. I know a lot of you are gonna know what the HD 7770 is because it's a very popular graphics card back in the day. And I actually even tested one. Any louder. This uses the same GPU as the HD7770, but the HD7770 has all 640 shaders enabled. This one only has 384. AMD put a 1 gigabyte of GDDR5 on this, and some variants actually have 2 gigabytes of GDDR3. You wouldn't want the 2 gigabyte variant because that will severely limit our uh, gigabits per second. Stock. The RAM comes in at 1125 megahertz and the core comes in at 800. We were able to get a little mild overclock to 1200 megahertz on the RAM and 860 on the core. If you guys have watched the channel for a while, you already know we're not gonna be putting a dirty potato in the system. We're just gonna first off get it a little alcohol wipe, wipe it down. It's really not dirty enough to do the Blake Cream special. Just gonna get in here, change this thermal paste and then give it a nice little wipe down with my little polish and then we'll be on our way. For our target resolution today, we're going to be targeting 720p in every single game we play, since the one gigabyte of GDDR5 will obviously be our limitation. So now that we've went over the specs of this crazy little thing, let's see what it does in some games. For our first game and benchmark of the day, we have Fortnite at 720p performance mode. We scored an average of 112 FPS with a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 35. All of the additional in-game settings like view distance were also set to low as well. And this was all recorded on an external HD60. Now our average was actually calculated over five games. I gave this card the best opportunity and the best chance of getting the best FPS possible. And in all actuality, it really didn't do too bad. I could play on it and there was obviously some hitches here and there, but the graphics card itself held up just perfect enough for me to get a bunch of frags and almost pull a win out. But at no point did I actually feel hampered by the graphics card. Sure, there were some hitches. Sure, there were some issues. But it was still entirely playable. And that's the entire point of this, is to come across as playable. Is everybody going to be using a CPU as fast as the 11900H? Probably not. But it still begs the fact that it can still handle playing Fortnite at 720p in 2023. I'm going to be very interested in the next games that I have to play and see what it can do in them. Another esports title, we have Overwatch at 720p with FSR on. We scored a buttery smooth average of 109 FPS with a 1% low of 86 and a 0.1% low of 73. Luckily, our graphics card supports the early version of FSR, so we can go ahead and utilize that. Overall, this is probably going to be the best case scenario for the graphics card. Overwatch is an extremely easy to run esports title. Even at that, it's very, very interesting to see a graphics card of this speed being able to play this game without any stuttering during big boss fights. I know I say boss fights as in a fact that it's a team, but still, with a lot of action happening on the screen, there's no buckling, there's no stuttering and the GPU is the direct bottleneck. So with that said, we're now two for two. So this is COD Warzone 2.0 running at 720p windowed mode with the window scaled down and it's running at a render resolution of 436p. We scored an average of 31 FPS with a 1% low of 19 and a 0.1% low of 12. Guys, I'm gonna be completely honest. I have no clue 
how I got this to run and even play at all. I just opened the game and it started working. I believe that FSR is actually helping us quite a bit. When I turned it off, I was getting about 10 FPS. I could barely play on this as it is. I'm sure if I played long enough, I'd be able to get a few kills and it would probably be even better in regular multiplayer, but I don't think very many people are playing multiplayer COD as it is right now. But still, it's very, very, very impressive to even see this game working on this GP. It has me stuttering for words just thinking about it because it's just, it's nuts to think about. A $60 card playing this game in 2023, insane. Now for our old school favorite, we got GTA 5 at 720p normal settings. We scored a very nice average of 90 FPS with a 1% low of 75 and a 0.1% low of 50. More than likely, this card could push 1080p on this game, but I actually think that it would be more valuable for you to get 90 FPS at 720p rather than maybe 40 to mid 50s at 1080p, if I'm being honest. But the game was absolutely playable and I was blowing stuff up and there was no glitches, hitches, stutters or anything at all. So yet another extremely impressive performance for the potato. Is there anything that this thing will refuse to play? Next up, for the best competitive FPS shooter of all time, we have Counter-Strike at 720p medium settings. We scored a nice average of 141 with a 1% low of 13 and a 0.1% low of 12. Some of these dips in the FPS can actually be found because of my hard drive that I'm actually using on this game and not so much the graphics card. So keep that in mind. As you watch the gameplay, it'll become more evident that it's actually pretty smooth. And we were able to get a little bit better graphic fidelity out of the game and able to squeeze a bit more because Counter-Strike is very easy to run on a GPU. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're like 3.5 out of 4, which is crazy. Is it going to play Hogwarts Legacy? No. Is it going to play Cyberpunk? Probably not. Is it going to take care of your esports titles like Valorant, Counter-Strike, and Fortnite? Yeah. For our last game of the day, we have Raft at 720p low settings. We scored an average of 47 FPS with a 1% low of 40 and a 0.1% low of 39. Now this is a Unity game and it's not extremely intensive to run, but it does take some computational power to run. This is a great example of a modern game that you can play on HD 7730. And honestly, I could play with this. If I was having a good time with my friends and we were enjoying this game, I wouldn't even be bothered at the graphic fidelity of the video game. This kind of takes me back to early 2014, early 2015, when I had a very potato system and I was playing games at quality like this and having a great time. And I definitely think one of the reasons why I appreciate this graphics card performing like it does is because of times like that. Did I cherry pick some of the games that we play today? Sure, but you can still play something. It's not totally useless. And that's what's really important. I definitely respect AMD for giving this card updates up until two years ago, which is very, very impressive. So if you enjoyed this quirky little video, make sure to leave a like on it and also leave a comment. If you have any experience with a HD7730 potato and you still use one or you're thinking about getting one, let me know. However, I will tell you, I don't recommend this graphics card for anybody other than somebody using YouTube, because other than that, it's really not going to play much for you. But if you need an HDMI port and you find it really cheap, maybe not a terrible option. And like mine, it has a dual slot, there is no power connector, and mine also has a display port on it. So you could theoretically use it with a newer end monitor. Not the worst deal in the world. I do have many more video ideas up here in Monoggin and they're ready to be produced. So make sure to stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell as well. Also, I have some other content I'm experimenting, experimenting excuse me, with on my channel. So you can also check that out as well. I also have a second channel, Iceberg Editing, and I post all my side content stuff over there like AMVs and shit like that. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to that too, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh. She's not interested. You don't like a graphics card? Gidget, you want a graphics card? Here. Okay, fine. I'll go away.